one guess about what topic I am working on with my students this week. Think you have it? If you guessed the mole, this is Avogadro on my shirt. You would be right. This is one of my favorite t-shirts. I always tend to wear like a science t-shirt on Friday. So my students tend to, to like my t-shirts. But um, so I always tend to wear them just to kind of start it as like a conversation piece, you know, to start the day. And the kids always like to see what they say. And I actually read something. I think um, I first read about like that idea of like wearing a science t-shirt on Friday, sci-fi. Um, from a person, I think it was in ChemEd, actually, ChemEd Exchange. Um, that's like a blog that I follow. I'll link it down below. But um, we are covering the mole now. Um, we didn't start the week, though, with it. Remember last week I was working on Electrochem with my students, and then we finished Electrochem this week, but I had to have my students actually make their own voltaic cells. And while I probably could have quizzed like early on this week, I'm glad that I did that way because I really felt like giving the students an opportunity to actually build the cells really helped. It's actually kind of cool. So I gave them all different electrodes and their corresponding solutions. And I gave them a challenge. And I said, I challenge you to build voltaic cells that have the, you know, the, one of the highest cell potentials. And then I give you the challenge to build one that has the lowest cell potential. And then basically they were able to build their cells and test their predictions. And I think it worked really well. Um, my students took their quiz actually yesterday and they did phenomenally well they did such a great job and then after they finished the quiz that's when we started talking about you guessed it the mole so um, the mole is one of my favorite things to talk about mostly because I have this activity that I do with them that makes it really um, more tangible like a more tangible concept for them where they can actually touch things and do stuff as an activity so let me show you what I what I did so basically I give them different samples of like atoms so like here's an example of atom they're just like little ping pong balls um, when I think of atoms I always think about round things so I just try to get round items I've got little gumballs and then and finally, I've got marbles. So I have the students correlate the different atom types to the mole by first, for example, counting out a dozen of each type of atom. And the students count out a dozen and they make conversion factors from each dozen. And the conversion factor corresponds to how much um, each dozen will you know weigh or has what it, the mass is and so they make a conversion factor for all of these different atom types and they use it to calculate for example you know if i give you this many dozen what's its mass or if i give you the mass how many dozen must you have so they start to kind of work with how to interconvert between those two types of units and those two types of um, conversion factors and then they go ahead and they read about what a mole is. And I say basically, you know, a mole's not an animal. Um, it's something that chemists use to convert from the really teeny tiny, you know, microscopic nature of matter to the something that you can actually pick up and put on a balance. And so on the back, the students then go ahead and they're given these mole blocks. So this, for example, is a mole of zinc and this is a mole of aluminum and this is a mole of copper. And basically they see that, hey, you know, these, all of these samples, they contain the same number of particles, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, but they have different masses. And then what's cool about this is they see that the mass of each block actually corresponds to the mass on the periodic table. And then um, just like they did on the front, they're going to start to make conversion factors out of that information and um, they go ahead and they they do their converting and then i give them some problems to try um, i give them compounds too and eventually they figure out you know how to calculate molar mass so it's really simple yet really effective and my students really like the fact that they can actually like do something like to, to understand and like use like some sort of like metaphor to understand what a mole is to chemists so um, I thought it went great because, and I was just so amazed because they were calculating in no time. I, I couldn't believe it. So um, this was a very, very good activity to get them thinking. And then of course, you know, I do this activity and then what I do is I assign a, like an, a video, an ad puzzle that I made on how to convert um, between, you know, moles and particles and moles and mass. So I always do the guided inquiry first and then I do um, the 
you know, uh, calculating and like, here's basically how I expect you to do it with dimensional analysis second. And so that was their homework assignment. But overall, I was very pleased. It went so easy and I'm excited to see what happens next week. I hope you had a great week. Um, thank you so much for watching and I'll check in with you next week. Thanks so much for watching to the end of this video. I hope you found the information helpful as you teach science to your students. I really don't want to lose touch, so please make sure that you hit both like and subscribe so you get notifications every time I post a new video, and I'll catch you later.